from the heart of the 757 in Norfolk's cool neon district, it's Coast Comedy Live. Tonight features the best of the best. Fred McKinnon, Lucas Bone, and from Hot 91.1, DJ Scandalous. Now, it's your favorite hometown girl in heels, your host, April Wooder. Coast Comedy Live. Is everyone having a good time tonight? Yeah. All right. Okay. Give it up for our DJ, DJ Scandalous of 90.1, the soul of the A. Yeah. DJ Scandalous, you are keeping us moving all night long. Now, you always expose us to the hottest music in the 757. Who was that you were playing? That was Rob J. He's an artist straight out of Norfolk, VA. The song is called Party Don't Stop, and you can for sure hear it on Hot 91. Tune in. All right, the party don't stop. Thank you so much, DJ Scandalous. And you know the party don't stop right here on Coast Comedy Live, right? Yeah. All right. We are coming to you live, or almost live, from the Neon District in Norfolk, Virginia. There's so much talent here in the 757, and you know how we do. Coast Comedy Live brings you the hottest comedians from here to everywhere. So, who's ready to laugh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, first up, he brings the house down monthly for men and women who serve the military, and he's taken his talents to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. That's the White House, y'all. Give it up for Team Fred. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here because um, they took real good care of me. They treat me like a celebrity. Um, they called me, they said, hey, do you have any travel requests? I never had that question before. So I didn't know how to answer. I said, well, I don't like driving long distances because I was in the military, I got bad knees. The guy was like, you was in the military, don't even worry about it. We gonna fly you here. I said, y'all gonna fly me? He said, yeah, to make sure you're protected, we gonna put you on the Lord's airline. I said, the Lord's airline? What airline is that? He talking about spirit. I said, Lord Jesus. I I wouldn't put my enemies on spirit, no. <laughs> then they flew me out of Richmond. Today's event is in Norfolk. Only problem is I live in Suffolk. I had to ride by here to get to the airport. <laughs> but I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I am a disabled military vet. Last year I got some good news from the Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, they mailed me this trophy and it says, we want to present this to you, Team Fred, as our 2021 Performer of the Year. So I'm very excited about that. <laughs> and, and, Y'all clap too early, I won't finish. Um, I don't remember auditioning. So I was trying to figure out how they found out about me. Supposedly somebody secretly recorded one of my performances, emailed the video to the Department of Veteran Affairs in DC and out of thousands of video submissions, they selected yours truly, born and raised in the 757 and that's how I got named uh, the 2021 Performer of the Year. Um, it wasn't for comedy. It was for the performance I put on at the VA hospital doing my disability claim. <laughs> I didn't know you get paid for a disability. I went down there acting a straight fool. I didn't know. <laughs> no, nah, because when I got out, they told me I had to take a disability exam. I was honest. I said, I feel fine. The lady said, fool, you need to take this exam because based on the results would determine your disability rating. This would be the amount of money you get every month for the rest of your life. I said, for real? <laughs> she showed me that pay chart. I said, I can get all that money. She's based on the results. So I did the same thing the veterans did. I went home and practiced. Yeah. <laughs> I came back to the hospital the next day. No lie, the first test, cover your left eye. Look at the chart on the back wall. Start at the top, read left to right. Sound like it's easy, but I told you I had the money on my mind. <laughs> I'm down at that VA, I was like, um, look like a three, uh, a cross, <laughs> the number one. I said, T. I took my hand and I was like, Lord Jesus, exit? The doctor said, fool, we back here, so let me try again. Uh, I had to ask the lady, how much money did that get me? Like, why am I on the chart? The second test, y'all may be familiar with that test. They put me in this little phone booth, put these headphones on me, gave me this little button to push, a little hearing test. Now, I hope nobody here work at the VA. Or we ain't got no snitches in here. <laughs> I'm about to be transparent. I heard every last one of them beeps came through them headphones. I ain't pushed that little button for nothing. <laughs> I left that apartment with two hearing aids and a dog. 
and 40% of them think they paid for this watch they bought me. I look real good tonight, I think. And then I got greedy. I should have left well enough alone. I went back and tried to claim um, sleep apnea, sleeping disorder. I'm so thankful they changed the way they do the test because I can never pass the old test. I can pass the new one. Y'all remember how they did a sleep study? You had to go to a facility, spend the night. They would monitor your breathing overnight to determine you got a sleeping disorder. Nowadays, they mail you a mask. You wear the mask overnight, mail it back, they connect it to a computer, can download results. They're gonna mail me a mask. Tell the truth, nothing wrong with my breathing, but to increase my chance of getting more money, I decided to take the mask and I put it on my daughter's baby alive, baby doll, you know. <laughs> no, because every time you hug her, she be wheezing, ee, like she got asthma, so I help me get some more money, you know. I put it on the baby doll, the next day I mail it to the VA as a joke, I was just having fun. Uh, two months went by, the VA sent a package to my mama house. Inside the package was a check for $85,000. There was an Arlington Cemetery plot application. Um, <laughs> an American flag for like a triangle. I was confused. I called the VA, why y'all send my mama that? The lady dropped the phone and said, God is good. I said, all the time. She said, I'm so shocked to talk to you. I said, why is that? She said, based on your sleep study, you died. I said, I died. <laughs> she said, this test said you stop breathing for eight hours. I didn't realize my daughter took the batteries out the baby loud there with her. I didn't realize she did that. And I end on this one. Um, we live in a very uh, divided society, but me and my coworkers came up with a very innovative way to have everybody included. Um, we all come from different ethnic backgrounds, political affiliations, religious denominations. Uh, but every month, me and my coworkers, we pick an activity that we want to do together to learn about a different culture. Uh, last month, Mike picked taking everybody to a tanning salon. You can laugh because I didn't think I needed to go. But I went. I went. The lady said, "Go back there, Fred. Lay down. Pull the t uh, top down. Thirty minutes. You're done." Got out, I felt good. Mike said, how you feel? I said, I look good. I said, what you think? You got a little, a little darker, no problem. I went to go pay $150. I said, that's very expensive. Mike said, actually not. It's a good price for a full body uh, tan. I said, full body? That's when I had a black moment. I said, Mike, was I supposed to take my clothes off? <laughs> he said, what? I said, man, I paid $150. I ain't getting nothing done but my face and my forearms. Look at this. This don't make no sense at all. Don't make no sense. I had all my clothes on. I had all my clothes on. Hey, y'all, that's my time. Team Fred, thank you guys. All right, give it up for Team Fred. Well, that was wonderful. All right, we'll have more Coast Comedy Live after this. Still to come on Coast Comedy Live, a performance by comedian Lucas Bone. Coast Comedy Live is sponsored by Toy Meister, largest toy selection on the East Coast. All right, DJ Scandalous, you got the music still going. Welcome back to Coast Comedy Live and the party don't stop and it won't stop with our next act. He has had success out of the gate when he had his first comedy special. He got more than 50 million views. You heard him on Sirius XM Radio and NBC. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear it for Lucas Bow. <laughs> What? What is going on, 757? Y'all sound good. Like they said, my name is Lucas, and I am from a small town in Southern Virginia where everybody has guns except me. <laughs> I had dinner with my best friend, Jason. He has never left our small town. He told me that in 2021, he had purchased five AR-15 assault rifles. And I was like, Jason, why do you need so many guns? And he lost it. He was like, uh, okay, all right, okay, hey, listen, what, what happens if a man comes to my house with a gun and he tries to take something from my house and I ain't got a gun? And I was like, Jason, you live in a trailer. <laughs> like, your house is on wheels. Like, what happens if that guy has a truck? He can just take your house. Like, like you don't need to worry about a guy with an AR-15. You need to worry about a guy with Hemi and four-wheel drive. Like, that, that dude will steal everything, no shots fired. <laughs> and we couldn't be more opposite on the political spectrum. Like, Jason's one of these guys. He's like, we need to build a wall. I'm like, you need to build some credit. <laughs> Like, they are not the problem. Like, if they wanted to build a wall, they could. You've been trying to build credit since 2005. 
My wife and I, a couple of years ago, uh, we adopted our first child. Our first child is a little girl named Eliana. She is from Kenya, Africa. A couple years later, lightning struck twice for our family. We were able to adopt a second child. We adopted a little boy from Rochester, New York. His name is Alexander. Alexander is also black because you know what they say, once you go black. Um, <laughs> Nothing from the white Republican section over here. Just not they. They're like, what? What? What do? What do they say? What do they? Did we? Did was that? We only voted for Obama the first time. We didn't vote for him. We didn't get those emails the second time. I'm mad at my friends that were dads before me. Okay, we were dads. I was a, a parent very late in life, and uh, no, no one told me that like infants will go through a sleep regression. No one told me that. Like my daughter, we were living in New York at the time. Uh, my daughter would wake up around 2.30 in the morning and she would climb out of her crib in the dark and she would go to her bedroom door. She would open her bedroom door and walk around our New York City apartment in the pitch black. It was terrifying. Because when I'm not doing spots, I was in the city. I'd get home very late at night. I can't go right to sleep. I like to unwind by watching a terrifying horror movie with all the lights turned off in the living room, just the lights of the TV. I'm watching a scary, scary movie, y'all. And all of a sudden, from outside of my periphery, I just hear, I want pancakes. I'm like, ah! There's a demon in the apartment. I turn to my left. I can't see nothing. Ella's black. She blends into the night. It's terrifying. It's so scary. It's so, I fumble for a light switch. I turn it on. She's standing there rubbing her eyes. She's like, Daddy, I pee peed in my pants. I'm like, guess what, pumpkin? So did I. Yeah. Let's go change us. <laughs> And I love my daughter. I'm going to tell you right now, my daughter is stunningly beautiful. She could have been a Gerber baby model. She is beautiful. And here's the problem, folks. There's no good way to say this, okay? There's no good way to say this, but I have friends, and they got ugly babies, okay? I'm sorry. They, they, they try to bring my daughter's beauty down onto their regular level. They will joke around with me at cookouts. They'll be like, you know what? Maybe when Ella and Patrick get older, they'll date. I'm like, the heck they will. No. <laughs> No, I'm raising a princess over here. You need to tell your Quasimodo to get away from her. He should be ringing a bell somewhere. All right, let's be honest. I feel like some of y'all laughed, some of y'all didn't. The women said, mm -mm, no, that babies are precious gifts from heaven above. Yes, they are, but some babies look like they fell from heaven and hit everything on the way down. All right, look. I feel like I'm losing y'all, let's come back together. Okay, Norfolk, listen, be honest when I say this. You ever see a picture of a baby so ugly it makes you make a noise you weren't planning on making? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> they say, you're like, here's the picture of Tyler. Oh, dang, Jesus. No, 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 I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I, w I got a bad heart. You can't creep up on me with a demon, baby. You got to text me, you just can't. Uh, uh, oh, God. Turn them around, turn them. Uh, oh, God, I got to stop. And that's why I have black friends, because black people are honest. They will tell you to your face if you got an ugly baby. But black people have tact. They won't just say, you got an ugly baby. They'll say something smooth like, dude, that baby needs church. <laughs> Guys, my name is Lucas Vaughn. You guys are Know them a little bit. We'll be right back. Coast Comedy Live is sponsored by Toy Meister, largest toy selection on the East Coast. Welcome back to Coast Comedy Live. We have had the party going on all night with Team Fred and Lucas Bone. Give it up for them, y'all. All right, so I gotta ask you, Fred, your, your name is Fred McKinnon. Right. So what is Team Fred? Well, when I first started comedy, um, all my coworkers would come and watch me perform, and I competed at a competition at the Funny Bone. And in order to compete, you had to bring people. Ah. So when they counted how many people came for me, the guy was like, man, you got 40 people. You're like a team. And I'm like, Team Fred. Oh, OK. Yeah. And I saw some t-shirts in the audience. So you brought your team here today. Where's Team Fred? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. My uncle. Uh, <laughs> so uh, 
Lucas, I gotta ask you about your transition because you were doing comedy, you're doing cruise ship comedy, but now you also have like this amazing recording studio, right? Production company? Yeah, so we, uh, I started like most of the guys uh, doing stand up and I've, I've done everything, corporate, clubs, cruises. And uh, in 2016, uh, I had two albums that were on Sirius XM. They got a lot of plays. And I was always answering the question, like I would see comics and they'd say, how did you get two albums on Sirius XM? And so I would tell them, I'd say like, you have to get a studio. You got to put a hundred people in it. You got to get recording stuff. You got to do this, that, and the other. And they would always stop me. And they'd be like, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to do none of it. So like, how much to have you do it? Right. <laughs> so right. I don't want to charge my friends, but I said, look, if you let me produce it, I'll be the producer on your album and any profits we get, we'll just split it. And I've never had someone say like, no, that's not fair. And, uh, for, and we started in 2016, we're up to 32 albums right now. Wow, 19. that's great, give yeah, it up, give yeah. it up. <laughs> there you go. Uh, You're trying to get your album recorded. Ne ne next month is uh, uh, Team. Team Fred, <laughs> all right. Team Fred, Team we Fred. talked about it at the beginning. You, we, uh, we said 1,600. Uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, some of y'all didn't know what that was, but uh, how did you get into the White House? Um, I actually work with a nonprofit called ASAP, Armed Services Arts Partnership. Okay. I teach a comedy class for military veterans. Hmm. And in 2016, one of the affiliates in D.C. had a connection inside the White House, so they asked us to put on a comedy show with the class that we teach. And actually, I wasn't supposed to perform, um, but true story, uh, Joe Biden was supposed to be the host of the show. He was supposed to do comedy. He, no, he was supposed to host Oh, it. okay, I was like, hold up now, Joe ain't that smart. Nah. Okay. <laughs> so he was supposed to host the show and um, he was on the campaign trail with Hillary Clinton and I got a call and said, hey, would you like to host? I was just happened to be free that day and I went up there and I uh, hosted the show at the White House. So it was great. Wow, so was Obama there? No, nah, he oh, wasn't there, but the, it was for the staffers and the employees of the, of the White House. It was a great experience. Um, I, something I could put on my resume that I performed at the White House, so I'm, it's, I'm very proud of That's that. That's great. All right, Lucas. That's nice. Good. 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 Lucas, tell us what's next for you. I mean, what, what do you see yourself doing in, you know, two or three years? So I, I really am excited with where uh, our, our business is going. Uh, we produce comedy shows at breweries and vineyards uh, all across the DMV. Uh, we actually have a new venue in, um, it's at Maker's Craft Brewery, which is here in Norfolk. Oh, yeah. And uh, we do shows there. So our next show is coming up is going to be uh, this Friday. And uh, we've got, I, I fly in headliners from all over the world. Uh, Quincy's done it. Uh, Vince Avocito is this Friday. And uh, we're going to get Team Fred here soon. Uh, <laughs> Just soon. get a little yep. close. Get a little close. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we're, I want to grow the business more and more. I, one of the things that Quincy and I always talk about is, is bettering people. And I, I always thought that, like, I don't mind helping people. A rising ship, uh, a rising tide raises all ships. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited about, you know, uh, getting more of these albums done so where some of these comics can have that passive income and, and get their name out right. um, and just let them know what, you know, what we got in this area. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, Team Fred, what's next for you? Well, well, I put on monthly shows for the military bases. So August 12th, we'll be at Fort Eustis, which is the Army base in Newport News. So come on out. You can go to my website, imteamfred.com. Find out all the information about the show. Come out and support the shows we did at the military base. It'd be a great time when we have many comics on. I'm going to get this guy to come on. All right, Team Fred and Lucas <laughs> Doug, give it up. We'll have more post comedy live after the break. Good job, you guys. Give it up for that. DJ, DJ Scandalous from Hot 91. What's up, DJ Scandalous? What you think about our show? April, these guys are hilarious. Fred, we're not going to tell the VA and Lucas, uh, no more scary movies for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right, thank you so much for being with us, DJ Scandalous. We also got to thank our sponsor. Give it up to Coast Live's live sponsor, uh, Toy Meister. And they've got the biggest toy selection on the East Coast. Next week, you want to join us again because we have some fresh, hot talent for you, including a school teacher who also teaches comedy, Hatton Jordan. Plus, he runs a weekly karaoke night in Virginia Beach. We've got Dave Champion with us. your Friday night with us. It's your favorite homegirl in heels. I'm April Woodard. Good night. <laughs>